Ahoy! Welcome to Prague and welcome to another episode of the Mars Guide. Now, here in Prague, restrictions have been lifted temporarily, so now I'm allowed to wander outside without a mask. So I thought for the conclusion of this little mini-series, what are the checks ever done for us, that I would do it in a different location. And here I am, standing next to the beautiful Vltava River. So, we have asked, what have the Czechs given us, apart from this beautiful city of Prague, lovely golden frothy beer, Jaromir Jagra, contact lenses, and the father of genetics, Gregor Mendel. In this episode, we're going to look at a particular Czech invention that scientists and historians have argued for centuries has contributed to the progress of mankind. When I tell my tourists this, they are often shocked. So I always say, just prepare yourself a little. Ready? The sugar cube. Yes, where would we be without that humble sugar cube, the cubic packet of sweetness? Probably still living in caves. As with all inventions, people find other uses for them. Just ask any doctor or nurse working in the accident and emergency department of a hospital. And it was the same with the humble sugar cube. So how did this little cube help to combat one of the most devastating childhood diseases and lead to an interesting collaboration between two nations that were politically and ideologically opposed at the height of the Cold War? And what relevance does it have to what's happening in the world at the moment? Answers coming up. Many years before the sugar cube and granulated sugar, sugar came in the form of a sugar loaf. Households bought their sugar in tall conical loaves, sometimes as high as 180 centimeters or 5 feet. And then from that sugar loaf, the sugar had to be laboriously cut and crushed using tools such as sugar tongs, hammers, breakers, and scissors. Due to the hard and dense mass of the solidified sugar, Injuries often occurred when the sugar loaves were crushed. And this is what happened to Juliana Rad one day in August 1841 when she was cutting some sugar and injured her finger. Annoyed at yet another injury, she complained to the board of the sugar factory, of which her husband, Jakob Christoph Rad, was the manager. The factory was situated in the south of the country in a place called Jachitsa. She added, it is said, that sugar in the form of a cube would be much more practical, because then you could add it piece by piece, and then there would be less waste, more hygienic, and also easier to transport and store. So Jakob Christoph Rad took his wife's suggestions seriously, and immediately set about putting them into practice, and working feverishly on producing sugar in the form of a cube. Only three months later, it is said that he gave his wife Juliana a small box, with 350 white and red cubes of sugar as a present, and in 1843 he patented his sugar cube making machine. And very soon the invention took off, particularly in the cafes of Vienna. This was, after all, the Victorian age of the Industrial Revolution. People reveled in how man was harnessing nature and science to his or her own needs, and in a way, the sugar cube was an example of that. But how did it play a role in combating a devastating childhood disease? And what was the disease? The disease was in fact polio. But first, as always, a bit of background. Poliomyelitis, polio, is a highly infectious viral disease that mainly affects children under the age of five. The virus is transmitted by person-to-person -person spread, mainly through the fecal oral route. Yuck! Once in the intestines, it multiplies, and from there it can invade the nervous system and cause paralysis. There was a large outbreak of polio in the United States in the 1950s, and just like COVID today, it became a feared disease. In fact, they worked out that the virus was passed on during the summer months through places like swimming pools, as you know, not the most hygienic of places. And so they were often closed, as were theatres, cinemas, and places that people could gather. The disease was mild in some children, but for a small percentage, it had a devastating effect on their nervous system, inducing a paralysis that includes the muscles used to breathe. So, essentially, children were suffocating. Therefore, to treat the potential suffocation, lots of children were placed in something known as an iron lung, which is essentially a metal tube that worked by regularly changing the pressure inside, and that regular change artificially inflated and deflated the lungs. As you can see in this photo, hundreds of children ended up in an iron lung, 
It seems horrific, and no doubt it was. However, it saved the lives of thousands of children. Yet many who survived suffered long-term effects, in that the virus left them weak and partially paralysed. And what is even more tragic is that a few victims had to use an iron lung for the rest of their lives. So, just as we have seen recently with COVID, the race was on to find an effective vaccine. And the two scientists leading the race were Jonas Salk and Alfred Sabin. But both had a different approach. Salk believed that you needed to use a killed vaccine that would bring about immunity, but would have no chance of causing the disease. Sabin, on the other hand, believed that you needed a weakened live virus, since he felt that would provide better, more long-term protection. Salk's vaccine was an injection in the arm. Sabin's was an oral vaccine. Initially, Salk won the race, and his vaccine was rolled out in the 1950s. But because there was already a vaccine available, Sabin struggled to get any funding for the clinical trials of his oral vaccine. So he turned to the Soviet Union, then under communist control and the ideological enemy of the United States. So why did it happen at the height of the Cold War that two enemies collaborated? Because of the very fact that everyone wanted the same outcome, irrespective of political beliefs. Both countries wanted to find an effective vaccine, so perhaps it was a good example of international cooperation. In Sabin's vaccine was trialled in a number of ex-communist countries, including the then Czechoslovakia. About three and a half million children aged between two months to 14 years, that is about 93% of Czechoslovakia's child population, were vaccinated. The vaccine was administered in a liquid form in a teaspoonful of syrup simplex. Because Sabin's vaccine was easy to administer, it took over Salk's vaccine as the vaccination of choice and was administered by putting the vaccine onto a sugar cube. In fact, as a child, I can remember taking the polio vaccine on a sugar cube. Now, because of the mass vaccination program here in 1961, Czechoslovakia was the first country in the world to declare that they had eradicated polio. And by 1961, only 161 cases of polio were recorded in the US. By 1988, polio disappeared from the US, Australia and much of Europe. And by 2016, there were only 42 cases of polio recorded in the world. Now, sadly, because of COVID and the complications, that is again on the rise. And in these times when vaccines for COVID are beginning to be rolled out, the fight against polio is perhaps a wonderful, important example of the power of vaccines in combating disease. So when or if you have a choice to be vaccinated or not with a vaccine for COVID, I would suggest first looking at the facts and statistics rather than at the conspiracy theories. As a sober reminder of the sometimes crippling after effects of a virus, this is a photograph of Paul Alexander, who caught polio when he was six years old in 1952, and now, at the age of 74, still needs to use an iron lung. But, back to the sugar cube. In the town of Dechitsa, where Juliana and Jakob Kristoff lived and where there was the sugar factory, the town likes to remind visitors of this important event in recent history. In the town you will find this memorial, on which a sculpture of a sugar cube is proudly displayed. So there we are. That is our look at the humble sugar cube invented here in the Czech Republic and how it played an important role in helping to almost eradicate the terrible paralyzing disease that is polio. If you have enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, please don't forget to click and subscribe and press the little bell button to ensure that you are notified. Once again, thank you for watching and see you all again very soon.